When we are bitten by life unexpectedly, it can often cause damage beyond recognition. And the truth of the matter today is that many of us are living our lives out of the eye, didn't see that coming experience. The perspective says no, your faith will say that God is still fighting for me. But when your perspective tries to convince you that you are down and out, your faith will remind you that it is God who has all power in his hands, who is still working things for you. Say it again. The assertion of the fact that mercy is present means this, y'all. Without the existence of mercy, the outcome would be different. Meaning if mercy wasn't present, it would be another way. But Jeremiah says that because of the Lord's mercies, which now means that we have to shift our outlook and it has to be Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Marissa Farrow here, and I am thrilled to welcome you back into another night of the You Know What Day It Is, Friday Night Philip. I pray that if you're watching this live with us, that this is the best day of your week, that this week has not depleted you, has not drained you, has not taken everything from you, but that it has helped you to develop, it has helped you to see God in another way, that you've been able to take the lessons and the words uh, that were spoken into your life last week, whether here on this channel or somewhere else, and been able to apply it to your life so that throughout your week you are growing in the grace of God. You know what the Bible tells us, to study, to show ourselves approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, but rightly divided in the word of truth. And so that's why we get that every week we gather every week in effort to rightly divide the word of truth to be able to engage in God's holy word and be able to bring out theological constructs that help us to apply um, to our everyday lives in a very pragmatic way um, that helps us to be better believers better Christians. And so I'm Marissa Farrow. If you're not already following me, you can do that right now on Instagram at Marissa Farrow. And if you're not already a part of my community of people who receive inspirational content every day, you can also text me at 443-232-9600. And there you can join uh, a community of believers who gather uh, daily, weekly, and we gather to pray, to inspire, to uplift, to encourage one another. So I'm excited to be here. And even more than that, I'm excited to carry on um, this lesson from last week, which, you know, um, I tried to promise y'all was not going to turn into, uh, a, a study series, but the more that I have been looking at the life of Abram, the Lord knows the more I am inspired because I believe that in this season of my life. And I believe that for many of you who are watching this right now, we are being called to something. And the funny thing is this may not even be the first call, right? It may be uh, another iteration of the call or another exploration of the fullness of that call. And so because we are being called into something, I've been exploring this call to Abram because I believe that it gives us some understanding idea how to operate with the weight of the call, right? We talked about that last week, right? The, the being able to trust God in a way that we are able to operate in the blessings and benefits of his promises. And so tonight I want to revisit that. And tonight's topic, I want to talk about something. Clearly, this is unclear. Clearly, this is unclear clear. Genesis 12 and 1 is definitely going to be our go-to verse again, but we can take it a little bit further. Um, Genesis 12 and 1 is the moment where we see God call Abram uh, and he says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, from your people, this is the NIV version, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. This is, this is week two of this. I will bless you I will make your name great. I will bless you to be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, and all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. And this is where we want to park tonight. Verse four, Abram's obedience. So Abram went as the Lord told him. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the blessing of this day. Thank you for another opportunity that you've given us to engage and to indulge in your word. I pray now that you would make your word life and light unto us tonight, that it would begin to speak to our hearts, our minds, and our souls, wherever we are, because you are the God who is able to take one word and meet 99 different situations. So thank you now because you are meeting someone at the point of their need in Jesus name. Amen. All right. 
Let's get into it, y'all. Genesis chapter 12. I have been stuck on this. I have been in this in my personal study. I have been preaching uh, along the manner of this text. I have been utilizing it to help me um, to lift my thoughts and elevate myself even in a season of transition because um, even though this is Abram's first call that we can see, uh, at least um, in Genesis chapter 12, um, we know that uh, sometimes we got to be able to navigate um, those callings in life because to be called to anything is a transition, right? And so to be called into something uh, or rather out of something, whatever way God is calling you means that you have to make a transition. And one of the things that I find that we wrestle with in Christendom is transition. It is hard to leave what you know and go into something that may not necessarily be as clear. It is difficult to trust God in transition, right? But one thing that I have come to encourage us about tonight is an understanding that there will be a lack of uh, clarity that comes with the call sometimes, right? That every calling is not so clear to us where God says to us, this is the place that I'm going to send you to. This is the actual address. This is the point. This is the property. This is the person, right? And that becomes the difficulty when trying to discern through and be obedient unto uh, these seasons of our lives. And so Abram is a poster child, y'all, for what it means to be wrestling with a clearly unclear call. And what's so clear about it is God's um, urgency to Abram, right? And we talked about this last week. Abram uh, is, is coming from this obscure and this dark kind of history, right? For 60 plus years, he's lived under his family and father's house ruling thoughts and understandings, right? And so they come from this small city. We talked about the Ur of the Chaldeans uh, in early Mesopotamia, an uh, area that was heavily populated by individuals who were pagan and idol worshiping individuals. And so Abram is under a system that he has lived in, one that he has adopted and adapted as his own. And here in Genesis chapter 12, God has a plan for redemption, right? And a redemptive work towards mankind. We talked about this all last week. We just bringing y'all up to pace. And here he goes calling Abram. So in case you're jumping in for the first time, you're saying, well, Marissa, what does it mean that God is beginning a redemptive work? Well, we know that between Genesis chapter one and Genesis, what we, where we are now, chapter 12, a lot has taken place. The Lord has created the earth, right? He's created man, man has fallen in the garden and all of these things happen. And now God has got to make this, this, this understanding with Eve and Adam, right? About the, the curse that now will exist on mankind because of that fall, right? You know, I will put seed between, uh, I will put enmity rather between thy seed and his seed, right? And you will, you will bruise his head and he will crush your heel. You all know the scripture, right? That's found in Genesis. And then God ends up destroying the earth because of a lack of, 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 of Christian values and a lack of love and compassion and a lack of, of truth that exists in the land, right? And so the Lord ends up destroying the earth. Noah is the man who is uh, tasked and tapped to now bring that assignment into fruition, to now repopulate the earth. And now here comes God again with this new covenant that he wants to make towards mankind, right? So after the earth begins to be repopulated, here comes this man. And here's the reality. We don't really know why God chose Abram out of all of the folk in the earth, right? And the reality is that for somebody who's watching this right now, you still trying to figure out why God chose you, right? And for those who have been stuck on why God chooses us, let's be very clear. If that's where your hang up is, you're going to be hung up for a long time, right? Even Moses was trying to figure out why God chose him. He said, Lord, I'm not even the one. I got stammering tongues. I'm not even equipped to really stand before the people and say the things that you want me to say. There are times when I look at Marissa and I think, Lord, Marissa is just a little bit too gangster. She a little bit too Baltimore to be trying to teach the word of God. But for whatever reason, God chose me, right? And so I say that for the person who has been hung up on your calling. We don't know necessarily why God called you, right? We know that God has a plan and everything that he does. And so what I love about the story of Abram is, is that God approaches him in Genesis 12. We don't see where Abram even has a knowledge of God to pursue God. But for whatever reason, God chose this person who was plucked out of obscurity, out of 
pagan and idol worship, out of a, a, a familial system that is not uh, familiar with the presence and the power of God. And the Lord taps Abram and says, you're the one that I want to choose. You are the one that I want to call. And by the time we drop down to verse four, right, when the Bible tells us that God calls him in this obscure manner and Abram departed, maybe we can consider the fact that Abram was called because God knew that Abram had a willing heart. And maybe some of the things that we need to begin to consider in our lives is the condition of our hearts. Maybe it is that God sees beyond what you think, right? And what you feel about yourself. And he sees the condition of your heart. He knows that you are willing. He knows that you are yielded. He knows that you are submitted. He knows that you are authentic. He knows that you are a worshiper. And so all of these things come into facet, right? When God created you, right? That's what I love about Jeremiah chapter one. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, the Lord says, I knew you and I sanctified you. I don't know why I got hung up on that because that ain't even a part of my lesson tonight, but let's jump into this story about Abram. So Abram, is in the middle of this call of obscurity. I say that it is an obscure call because anytime God is requesting you to shift without a solution, that sounds obscure to me, right? God is telling Abram, I want you to come from the thing that you have operated in for the last 60 plus years of your life, all the things that you know, all the things that you're comfortable with, your status, your security, your stability. I want you to leave that and I want you to go to the place where I am going to show you, right? But the Lord tells them very clearly, get out. There's no, there's no mixed messages about that. He didn't say... At some point, I'm going to need you to come out. He didn't say to Abram, when you get good and ready to come out, no, the message is clear. He says, get out. And one thing about God is that he will give us a clear message. The reality is that sometimes we don't like to hear God clearly. Now, now, let's back up there, right? God can give you a clear message and it could be your ears that obscure the call. It could be your lack of faith that obscure the call. It could be your lack of vision that obscures the call. When I say obscures the call, I'm talking about it is your belief in what the call looks like that can guide you and direct you into going the wrong way. If you are not willing to trust the insecurity of the secure call that God makes to you, then you can very well miss the opportunity that God is trying to develop in front of your eyes. When God calls us, he don't call us in confusion. He calls us in clarity. Now here's the part that gets interesting. Some, sometimes I have found that clear callings can come with confusing questions. And I was always taught, and this is where I want to help somebody tonight, because I was always taught you ought not question God, right? And, and some people are still living under th this mantra that's been passed down from generations to generations about not questioning God, right? But then the Bible that I read tells me that I've been invited to cast my cares, come on, upon the Lord because he cares for me. So if I've got questions of God, doesn't it almost seem like I ought to be bringing those questions to God? Because perhaps the problem is that I've been bringing the questions that I have about my calling to people who are not capable of communicating the plan of God to me. The plan of God must come through the voice of God and the voice of God can only be strengthened through the discernment of God. The discernment of God can only be strengthened in relationship with God. Relationship with God can only be strengthened in intimacy with God. And this intimacy with God that can only be strengthened through understanding God. And how do we understand God, we understand him through his word. Which means that if I'm looking for clarity about my call, I can't keep going to my good girlfriend and my good homeboy. I got to learn how to get into this word and let this word guide me. Your word is a light unto my feet. Oh, and it is a lamp unto my pathway, right? It is the very word of God that would help us to fit the identity that God has already called us into, right? Before he formed us, he's called us into an identity and that identity and being able to operate an identity is found in the word of God. So if the Lord says to me that I'm invited to cast my cares upon him, here's the thing. I need you to understand respectfully. You can ask questions. Here it is. There is a way to raise a question to God without questioning the character of God. Abram is probably literally sitting here thinking the same thing that all of you and I are thinking, right? Because here's the, here's the first couple of questions. First of all, who are you? <laughs> Abram has no prior knowledge of the, 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 
the God of the universe. He comes out of this spot, this family, this house of pagan worshipers. He has, we don't want to say he don't have knowledge. We don't know that he has a previous relationship. There is no record of us understanding that Abram has a previous relationship with God. In fact, we talked about it last week, uh, Joshua 24 and two, it talks about the fact that Abram is born to a family whose ancestors in the book says worship beyond the Euphrates, right? And they worshiped other gods. There is biblical evidence to show us that Abram comes from a family of pagan worshipers. So here comes Abram being impressed upon by God. Who are you? So clearly this is unclear because there's a voice that's telling me to get up and go somewhere and Abram got to figure out who are you? That's the question. That's the first question on the mind, on your mind. The second question is, wait a minute. It's one thing for you to tell me who you are, right? But now in, in just meeting you, you expect me to leave everything I'm familiar with and go to a place that you haven't even defined for me. Clearly this is unclear. And then here's the third question. Now I'm from, I'm from Baltimore and I, I just said this, right? You want me to go to a place that you haven't defined for me? My next question is where are we going? Like, <laughs> like seriously, no, where are we going? Right? All of these questions have got to be arising in the mind of Abram. And if they're not arising in the mind of Abram, right? And we, we don't have any biblical evidence for that. The reality is that if God called any of us in this manner, the question would arise for us. Who are you? You want me to leave my family? And then wh where are we going? Clearly, this is unclear. And this is where I want to give you a level of comfort because I think that sometimes we can, we can find ourselves wrestling in the self-condemnation of a lack of understanding of God or a lack of understanding of how to operate in God, right? And so sometimes we get stuck because we don't know what way to move and we get stuck because we feel like having questions disqualifies us from being called. But let me just make it clear to you that your questions doesn't make God's calling to you any less clear. There are always going to be questions surrounding your call. The questions are not what disqualifies you from God. It is allowing the questions to keep you contained that will disqualify you or, or cause you to miss the timing that God has for your life. Verse four says, Abram departed. And that's where I want to park today because somebody has been trying to determine whether to depart or not. And the Lord says, you may have questions, but even with your questions, you got to move. Even with your questions, you got to depart. Even with your questions, you got to be willing to take a step. Even with your questions, you got to be willing to trust me because when you have questions of God, he can answer in your willingness to make a move. Now, here's the reality. God don't owe you any answers. He's a sovereign God. He, he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants to. And I know that that may sound harsh for somebody who's watching for the first time tonight or may, maybe somebody who's younger in Christ. But the, the reality is when we sign up to serve God, we sign up to do things God's way. You don't sign up to go work for the military and then question the military about how they operate, right? You don't go and serve for the government and then ask the government about how they operate and try to change their policies. No, when you sign up to be a Christian, you sign up to accept the sovereignty of God's nature, which means that I I don't always understand what he's doing, but I trust that he's doing it in my favor. Abraham had questions, but even in his questions, he was willing to move. The question for you tonight is, are you willing to move when you don't necessarily understand the fullness of God's plan for your life? Are you willing to move with the questions in your, in your head? Are you willing to move understanding that clearly God's calling for our lives sometimes is unclear. So Abraham helps us to understand this, that whenever God calls you into something, um, and, and again, this might not even be your first call and this may be a uh, calling into uh, elevation or calling into something greater, calling into something higher. Um, you must decide what to do with what you heard. That's, that's what Abraham, Abram shows us. He shows us that you have to decide what to do with what you heard. Um, we have to be able to accept, um, that sometimes clear callings come with a lot of unclear questions. Uh, so the, the question becomes, um, what, what makes Abraham depart, Abram depart, right? And how can I get, um, to the place within my spirituality where I'm able to, 
uh, move from where I am and be progressive towards the calling of God and the purpose of God for my life, even when I'm unclear about the place and the direction in which he's taking me, right? How, how can I encourage myself from the story of Abram to continue to press towards the things of God when I feel a little, uh, a little shaky or a little unsure about the direction that he's sending me in? Well, um, there's a couple things that I noticed about th this interaction or this exchange between God um, and Abram. The Bible tells us in verse four, and this is what I love, and I'm going to go back to it. He says, so Abram went as the Lord had told him. And he was about uh, 75 uh, years old at this time. So Abram departed as the Lord told him. That that was key to me. And, and I love uh, uh, getting caught up on the, the, the little statements. Abram departed as the Lord had told him. Mind you, this relationship that he has with the Lord is, is so new. It is brand new. What, what we are seeing is the first encounter between uh, God and Abram, at least that is biblically recorded. And this has got to be something that is awe-inspiring. It's got to be something that is overwhelming. And it has to be something that is so powerful that Abram knows he doesn't have an option but to follow this clearly unclear call, right? And, and so what makes Abram move? I want to suggest that Abram moves because it, it says the Lord has, has said it, right? I want you to know that the awesome splendor of God's presence is so undeniable that even if you don't know who he is, <laughs> by the time God gets through calling you and, and impressing upon your heart, my sheep know my voice. You're going to know that it's God calling you. Abram could not ignore the presence of a powerful God whose splendor is so awesome and so wonderful that he didn't have a choice but to follow this awesome and this powerful presence. Let me tell you something. Essentially, I'm saying, when it's God, you're going to know it. Mm. There's a lot of people that have called you out of position, but when it's God, you're going to know it. Abram says, I didn't have a choice but to follow this voice because I knew who it was. And, and there's a lot of people who've been called to a lot of things, and you know that it ain't God. And so you, 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 you decide within your spirit, whether you're willing to take the risk of investing your time and your energy into all these things that are calling you. But what I want you to know is the presence of God is undeniable. The calling of God is undeniable. The work of God is undeniable. The anointing of God is undeniable. Meaning when you are following the voice of God, you ain't going to have no choice but to recognize that this presence is going to lead me into my purpose because the awesome splendor of God's presence of the true and unadulterated presence of God will not just speak to you, but it'll validate itself to you. Mm. You know that it's God's voice because even in confusion, he'll give you peace. He'll give you enough peace to depart. Abram got to have questions. He got to have questions. The questions are there. We know the questions are present. But he got enough peace to depart. And the question that I have for you is, can you trust God enough to move? That, that's the first step. Can you trust him enough to just get out? Just to, just to be willing to say, yes, I'm willing to step away from all the things that I'm familiar with. To step into this next season of my life. When it's God, you're going to know it. When it's God, he's going to make it fit. When it's God, the peace is going to fall in place. When it's God, the, the way is going to start being made clear. When it's God, doors are going to start opening in your favor. When it's God, you're going to know that it's God. Because the awesome presence of God will not lead you into any place but purpose. So, so why, did, why did Abram move? Abram moved because he understood that he was in the presence of God. An undeniable presence. One that couldn't be confused or conflicted with anybody else. And you got to get to the point where your relationship with God and your understanding and your knowledge of who God is is so strong that you are able to discern between when God is calling you out of something, even when there's questions, and when there's some other power of the person or the project trying to call you out. Right? We got to be able to trust God. So, so how, how will I know? How will I know? As you start moving, it's going to start working. As you start going... It's going to start figuring itself. It's going to start figuring itself out. And the question that I have for you is, 
Did you see what God said to Abram? Is the power and the promise of just being willing to depart even when you have questions. The Lord says, as you move, I'm going to take you to a land that I'm going to show you. This is what I love about this, right? Geographically, we know that God is not placing the land there. The land is already there. There are some things you're not going to be able to see or understand in the spirit until you're willing to move in the direction of God concerning your life. We know that the place that God is taking him to is already long established. How many things are you just waiting for God to reveal to you have already been there? Some stuff you ain't going to have the spiritual sense to even discern or understand until God opens up your spiritual eyes. That means that you got to have a spiritual response to his spiritual calling. Yes, God, I'll go. Are you willing to start moving in a direction where God can start making spiritual sense of all of the blessings that he's already had in store for you? Some of us have been sitting here wondering and worrying about what we don't have and why we don't have it. When the reality is some stuff is only unlocked in motion. Are you willing to move enough to see God unlock it? Right. And here's the thing about spiritual sense. The land can be there all the time. But if you're not tuned in and connected to the source of the blessing, you can mess around and walk right past it. There is a spiritual sense. There is a discernment. There's a spiritual sense inside of you where when you arrive God gonna say that's the place when you arrive God gonna say now that's the that's the land right there that's the that's the marker that's where I was trying to send you that's the place that I was trying to push you but there has to be a level of spiritual discernment on the inside to be able to trust that God is not gonna let you miss it we said this last week when I trust God I know that I can trust God enough that he ain't gonna let me miss it he ain't gonna let me miss it because as I start moving he's already promised me that he gonna show me the land he going to show me the place of promise. He going to show me the place where I'm supposed to strike. He going to show me the place where I'm supposed to settle. He going to show me the place where I'm supposed to end up. But there is a spiritual sense that can only be unlocked in your motion and in your willingness and in your yieldedness to the plan of God. God says, I'm going to take you to a place where I'm going to show you. Now, this is what else I love about this. Abram has the opportunity to respond to God. And this is what I noticed. That multiple times in the Bible, God gives covenants, right? Some of those covenants are conditional covenants. Some of those covenants are unconditional covenants. And in this very moment, I would like to suggest that Abram is being called into an unconditional covenant, right? A conditional covenant, covenant is, says, where usually I would see in the Bible an if-then statement, right? More like, if you do this, then I'm going to do that. God says to Abram, let's go back to the scripture. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing to those around you. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. So Abram went. And here's the thing. The all, he didn't even ask her. He, he, he didn't say, um, Abram, if you go from your country, if you go from your people, if you go from your house, I'm going to do it. That's not a conditional blessing. This is a covenant that is unconditional nature. The Lord says, Abram, go from your country and I'm going to do it. And the thing is that when you have an unconditional covenant in your life, you have an unlimited supply of blessings that the Lord has, has honored and already spoken and agreed to release unto you. He says, I'm going to do it. It doesn't require anything of you. I didn't say to you, if you leave, he says, I'm going to do it one way or the other, but I am calling for you to leave. I'm calling for your obedience in the process. And the question is, are you willing to make the minimal effort? Because the minimal effort in this is that, that Abram has to leave what he's familiar with. Maybe sometimes the cost to your next level is your comfort. Maybe the thing that you must part ways with is your comfort. Maybe the Lord, hallelujah, has to break you out of your comfort and out of the complexities of your comfort in order to expose you to the depth of your purpose, to the fullness of who you are. Maybe what you are comfortable with has been the very reason you have not been able to step into the blessings and the greatness that the Lord has put in your life. The only thing that you must do is kill your comfort. Sometimes if you're not willing to kill your comfort, your comfort can kill your purpose. 
Sometimes if you're not willing to step away from the comfort of and the familiar of having the stability of people, you're going to miss the stability of the promise that is in front of you. Abram, you got to part ways with what you're familiar with to go towards the future. And I know that it is easy to do what is familiar than to face the future, but I'm challenging believers in this season to cut your comfort, kill your comfort, face the future and see what God has for you. Abram says, I'm leaving from where I am. I'm departing because I have an unconditional covenant that is attached to my life. God didn't tell him, if you do it, I'm going to do it. He says, I'm going to do it anyway. He says, I'm going to take you to the land that I'm going to show you. Sometimes it isn't that what God spoke isn't there. It is that you need a certain level of disconnection, hallelujah, from every distraction to be able to see it. I don't believe that Abram would have been able to see the land still connected to the comforts of his family. I don't believe that Abram would have been able to see the land. He probably would have never even went in the direction of the land had it not been for God telling him, cut ties with your comfort. Sometimes it isn't that it isn't there. Not even sometimes because every step that is ordained for your life, the Lord has already mapped it out and purposed it out. It's not that it's not already there. It's that sometimes you got to be in a season of unlocking to see what the Lord has already been trying to show you. And that's what I believe. I believe that the Lord is trying to give us a, a, a understanding and, and trying to bring us to a place where we can be comfortable with the uncomfortable. That, that's what faith is. We talked about this last week. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, which means I don't yet have it. And it is the evidence is the result of things that are unseen, meaning I can't even see it yet. Faith calls you to a place of discomfort. Faith calls you to a place of instability. Faith is clearly unclear. But here's the thing about having faith. The faith that we have is in a God who has promised us to be a guiding voice to us. Meaning when we are willing to trust God in the uncomfortable places of our lives, we will certainly and surely and soon find that we have a comforter in God and a voice in God that is the ultimate GPS system. Y'all, God is better than Waze. He's better than Google Maps. I ain't being funny. He won't just cause you to avoid the police on the road. He will allow you and cause you to avoid the pitfalls in life. But you got to be willing to trust God as a guiding voice. And in order to allow God to be a guiding voice, you got to know the voice of God. So if I got to know the voice of God, where do I get it? I get it in relationship. Where is that strengthened? Strengthened in intimacy. Where is that intimacy strength? Intimacy strengthened. It's strengthened in the word. You got to trust that God is a guiding voice. Psalm 32 and 8. I will instruct you. That's what the Lord says. I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you and I will do it. Psalm 32 and 8 with my loving eye on you. Meaning even in my discomfort, the Lord's got his eye on me. Come on. His eye is on the Pharaoh. And I know that's it. Daddy watches me. He also has his love and eye on you. Whatever your last name is. Today. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean out onto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And here's that God in voice again. He will direct your path. And this is my favorite. Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Don't you know that the God who created you has given you an internal ear that is tuned to the frequency of heaven? You can't miss the voice of God if you try. That voice will hearken you in the middle of the night. It will quicken your very spirit. It will wake you up inside. There is a guiding voice that is walking with you. And so there is a, a statement that I want to give to you because when you got to trust this God and voice, you, you, you got to ask the question, well, well, how do I trust it? What do I need to get it? I have a friend by the name of Pastor John Denever in New Orleans, and I was watching this live the other day, and he said it takes guts to do life, and it's that simple. And I want to give that to you. It takes guts to be able to trust the plan of God concerning your life, moving on the unconditional covenant that God has already 
promise to all of us because we too are byproducts of the Abrahamic promise and the Abrahamic covenant and the covenant that has been given to Abraham. We supposed to be blessed because of it. That's what the Lord told, tells uh, Abraham. He says, hey, when you're willing to do what I've asked you to do, or rather what I have called you into, right? He says, when you're willing to make that, that, that departure, when you're willing to kill your comfort, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless those who bless you, right? Um, there is a benefit to obedience that, that cannot be denied. There is a benefit to obedience that can only be found in being gutsy enough to trust God, to take that step. And so uh, there are three prayer targets that I want to give to you that come out of those benefits that the Lord has given to Abram because Abram comes into the picture and verse four says he departed. And here's the blessing that the Lord gives to him. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless and I'll make your name great. I'm going to make those around you be blessed because of you. Then I'm going to bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. And the Bible says, and all the family of the earth shall be blessed through you. And then the Bible says, Abram departed. So the promises of God that we are entitled to, that are a part of this Abrahamic covenant that we also are recipients of, are the three prayer targets that I want to give to us tonight. God in my obedience, God uh, in my departing, God in my willingness to cut ties with my comfort, God with me understanding that clearly this is unclear, that I can raise a question to you without questioning your character. These are the three blessings that you have already given to us in an unconditional manner, and these are my prayer targets. So as I depart, I pray that you will honor my obedience. This is what he says to Abraham. He says, I'm going to bless you. That's a personal blessing. God, give me a personal blessing. Huh? Bless my house. Bless my family. Bless my children. Bless my job. Bless my business. Bless everything that is attached to me. God, as I am willing to follow you, I need a personal blessing. I need you to do it, not just for those who are directly connected to me, but it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother or my father. I need you to do it for them too, but God, it is me. I got a personal need. I need you to go down into the inner recesses of my heart and deal with every personal thing that has been troubling my life. God, as I depart, as I'm willing to trust you, I need you to give me a personal blessing. But then on top of that, he says, I'm going to also uh, make your name great. And that means that I'm not just going to give you a personal blessing. I'm going to give you a national blessing. I, I'm, I'm going to bless you in a way where everybody around you is going to understand the power of God that operates in you. So God, when you give me this national blessing, make that blessing a, a story that I can become your catalyst in the earth. Allow me to be a part of the goodness and the works of God. Allow my life to be a light unto others that because I trusted you that they too can trust you. So God, when you bless me to lead others and to show others the goodness of the Lord, I pray that you would also bless them. He says, I'm going to make you a national blessing. But then he says, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed through you. I'm not just going to give you a personal blessing. I'm not just going to give you a national blessing. I'm going to give you an international blessing. I'm going to give you a blessing where every person, every family in this earth can be blessed because of what you do. And who knows the work that you are called into? Who knows what policies you are called to change and impact in your city, in your local branch of law, in your local government? Who knows uh, what, what, what countries and, and, and people you are called to bless the moment you are willing to get up and depart from your comfort and move towards the direction of where God is calling you to. So listen, clearly this is unclear. The calling of God is unclear. The transition of God is unclear. You go have some questions in the call, but guess what? That does not give you the right to negate the responsibility to depart when God calls you. Abram, he's our poster child that if you depart, if you are willing to cut ties with your comfort, if you are willing to trust God in the call, and even in the instability of the call, that God will give you a personal blessing. God, I pray that you will bless me. God will give you a national blessing. Bless those who are directly connected to me. Then God, give me an international blessing. Help me to be a blessing to people that I may never know, I may never see. Listen, that may be um, where you are. This might be your season of transition. You might be struggling with being called into something new, something bigger, something greater, something that doesn't look like where you already are. But guess what? Tonight, I want you to know it's going to be all right because clearly it's unclear. Let's pray, God. 
I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to speak to somebody's heart, mind, and soul this week. I pray that you would cause them to be made better because of the power of your word and because of this opportunity that you've given us to come together and to rightly divide your word. Now, God, speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit, as we carry this word without us, with us through this week. I pray that you would save someone, heal someone, bless someone in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, everybody. This has been week number four, and I can't wait to get back for week number five. If you're watching this right now, and we are in there, and you still got a little bit of time, if you're in Jacksonville, to make it now to Bethel Baptist Church. My big brother, Pastor Rudolph Walter McKissick, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he. Y'all already know I'm excited. I'm going down there tonight. I'm excited to be down there with him and my sister, Pastor Kim McKissick. And this is going to be a fantastic weekend. So, hey, I pray that you make the most of it. And you already know how we do here. If you like it, share it. If you love it, show it. And if it's been transformational to you, I need you to pass that blessing on to somebody else by giving it and being a witness to somebody around you. Until I see y'all next week, hey. Mm -hmm.